Good afternoon. This is Nina, and here we are for the thirty-first episode of the Audible Weed Walk. In the light of our difference, how diversity in nature and culture makes us human. It is a book, and I have mentioned about this book here in one of my previous podcasts. It is an awesome book by David Harmon. It asks an essential question. how do biodiversity and culture intersect if i remember correctly david harman the author had argued that if all dialects and languages be considered a language for a change and apparently there is a great debate amongst the linguists about it then we will find that more than 90% are, are of languages that have evolved around a particular habitat that covers only 10 to 12% of the earth's land surface guess which habitat yes it is the tropical rainforest also known as the humid tropical forest the diversity is high in them as much as it is high in in the diverse plants and animals that um, it hosts and according to the author the language defined by the culture for people who evolve in the area this is easily noticeable if one spends time in the tribal communities and remain an observer while being there let me give you an example uh, what he says about the relation between the language and the cultural aspects of the biodiversity and biodiversity take mahua or madhuka longifolia tree it is it has huge cultural significance with the tribal community while working in an area inhabited by saura or as they call themselves sora tribal group i had found that while we while we call um a tree as for example mahua tree the flower mahua flower and the seeds mahua seeds they call mahua flowers mahuli at least that name connects somehow to the act, the um, name of the tree which is mahua the seeds however are called tulo there is no connection each part of the tree itself has a cultural livelihood and lifestyle significance as um, fresh and dried flowers provide a source of sweet taste an iconic alcoholic beverage and seeds produces a healthy nutritious oil According to the author when biodiversity depletes people especially tribal people who are linked to the habitat are forced to move away or are weaned away with a different vocation when people stop using those languages there will be no need to use the term too low if one is not collecting and using mahua seed oil for example first the language will be lost then the memory perhaps of using it and with that we will lose an important and significant knowledge about nature now <clears throat> last week a journalist had come for a, for for my weed walk um her interest uh, was in cultural links to food match my interest taking the opportunity i could catch up with my friends in pondicherry one of them m kannan is a lead researcher at the french institute among other areas his expertise include contemporary tamil culture and cultural studies i remembered david harman's argument because he to mentioned something very similar we were talking about food for the dalit people if you are unfamiliar with the term indian society is divided into castes that transcends in reality different faiths dalits that literally means oppressed is the lowest in the cast ladder and officially refers to as schedule schedule cast i have been interested in the food that was possible for traditionally dalits to eat in different regions since they had no rights to own land they are often were farm workers and received their payments in share of grains they ate the rest they had to collect grow around the house i guess and gather so their food and flavors were defined not by what was needed or desirable but what is available and what they could access during discussion kannan had mentioned that 
Tamil word for weed is kalai. When I said edible weeds, well, he said it can be literally translated to something like a sapadeke kalai, or ed- which literally means edible weeds. And I used the Google translator, and it's it gave me the term called unna kudiya kalai, kalai. But Kannan pointed out that. Uh, that that um, that is when I remember David Harmon also that even when we can make a literal translation like that, it is an artificial one. It has no meaning or significance in that culture. The people who re- recognized which kalai to eat will refer to, to the plant as kalai, but as soon as they are they sort or pick them up for eating, they will become kirei or edible greens. So. Many of the weedy plants in nature and those mentioned in my books has the word kirei following their name and none has kalai, the term that is new to me. The knowledge and usage of kalai or weed makes it kirei. So when something refers to as kirei, it is loaded with information. Maybe something traditional, maybe new about the nutrition, about its medicinal or cultural significance. Such tiny shift in terms makes such a huge difference and conveys so much. I am amazed. As a reader, the knowledge the Dalit community or anyone who holds the wild cultivated greens, uh, holds about the wild cultivated greens, fruits, seeds and various parts, make them the guru in repository of uh, the repository of knowledge that we need to cope today with climate change with uncertainties now as part of my edible wheat project as some of you may already know i am planning not only to reprint the edible weeds coloring book and publish two more books in the series but also plan to include an integrated program involving training of educators to reach out to the knowledge re- to take this knowledge to our children, I call them the change makers of the future. To the women who are the health ministers of their family and often end up neglecting their own health. To the conscious eater who is seeking to reduce the farm to mouth distance and eat healthy nutritious local food and take care of the healthy health problem and all these in a joyful engagement while de-stressing, while honoring and the amazing knowledge, wonderful nature, and growing our own roots deep into nature, no matter where we live, urban, metro, semi-urban, rural, wherever. At its core, the project may have, may, has many layers. The underlying issue it addresses, as you have already figured, is our disconnect with nature. Not the loss of knowledge only, but the loss of our habit of inquiry that leads us to finding and updating what is edible, for example. The immediate expression of this loss is imbalance, malnutrition, macronutrient deficiency, etc. By the way, while malnutrition um, more often than not affect the poor, apparently nearly one third of the world population is micronutrient deficient. A wonderful, accessible, natural source of such micronutrient is uncultivated wild greens. I talked about the underlying and immediate issues. But what about what could be the intermediate issues? Issues that are more subtle, more dictated by social and cultural norms. Well, for the wild greens, one has to address the stigma of it being a poor man's food a poor person's food, to be politically correct. But more I think about it, I think I have to delve deeper. While medicinal and occasional usage of some of the greens as food was part of the traditional culture, the range of usage and knowledge lies perhaps with the Dalits. If we all start honoring the wild weedy greens around us, recognizing them, appreciating them, connecting with them and also eating them, we will in our own small way unshackle them. Take a pause, think about it. Another world 
a natural world waiting for us just in our backward ba- backyard and sometimes even sneaking in our f- flower pots when you find something as awesome as this you must share share far and wide exchange notes stories and recipes and all that i found that coloring book for adults a concept unheard of in india then as my approach to begin with nothing can go wrong with an experimental book one would love to hold to turn the pages to color and relax and like magic the essential information infuses you for those who wanted uh, to take it further there is a colored insert in the book to take along for your walk identify know and revel but of course the learning becomes easier and faster when there is a when it is shared among the kindred spirits so along came our weed walks what a journey it has been to share with people to exchange notes to stand corrected to learn to experiment and to eat i will continue to bring you some stories about this journey and where it is taking us next so i'll see you next time Stay well and stay safe.